Upgrades. And so it begins. Hi guys, this is Natasha with Team JVS with a non-spoiler series review of FX BBC's miniseries Great Expectations, an adaptation of the novel by Charles Dickens. This series premieres with the first two episodes on March 26th, a day after my birthday. Hey! Hulu subscribers will also be able to watch the show. Please be sure to like and hit that notification bell button so you know when to when we drop more reviews on the channel. Be sure to also subscribe so we can watch more of our content. Here is the official synopsis. The series follows the coming of age story of Pip, an orphan who yearns for a greater lot in life and a twist of fate and the evil machinations and of the mysterious and eccentric Miss Havisham shows him a dark world of possibilities. Under the great expectations placed upon him, Pip will have to work out the true cost of this new world and whether it will truly make him the man he wishes to be. <laughs> This series stars Fionn Whitehead as Philip Pripp, aka Pip, Olivia Coleman as Metavisham, Shalom Broom Franklin as Estella, so on and so forth. I'm going to get into other characters in a minute. The show is written by Stephen Knight, who has also done Peaky Blinders and did another Charles Dickens adaptation, A Christmas Carol. Everybody knows about Christmas Carol, like, let's be for real. <laughs> I got a couple of questions. Why now? Who asked for this adaptation? Did you? Because I did not. I did not ask for this adaptation. But thanks to this show, I am finally reading Great Expectations. <laughs> so I guess it did its job. It was one of those novels that was always on my to be read list for the longest and now I got motivation to read it. I am on chapter 25, so about halfway. Let's just say it has been a struggle getting to this point. The only film or series adaptation that I saw was the movie with Egan Hawke and Gwyneth Paltrow years ago. I remember immensely disliking the character, <laughs> Stella, like for a hate her. I am on the fence on whether this is a faithful adaptation because I have not finished the book. The changes that have been made so far helps the story be a little more comprehensive than the book and some of the characters in the book not in the show I, I don't really miss. So it does make the story a little more simplistic and easier to follow. Now this show started off slow for me, but it picked up around the end of episode two. There were some slow parts in the later episodes, but they were better paced than the first two. I'm really hoping the CGI and the VF effects are completed, especially when it comes to the river scenes, since it is a period piece. There was one part involving Pip's sister slash Joe's wife that I felt wasn't necessary. It, it did didn't even pay off in any way shape or form and it was just it just wasn't brought up again so it, it, it just didn't make sense to me. I really enjoyed the cast performances. They did a great job and more importantly they had great chemistry. The chemistry between the characters involved in the love triangle is pretty much what I was missing from Wayfair Witches. Let's just say at the end of the day I wanted more for Betty. That was my girl. Whitehead did uh Whithead did a, a wonderful job as Pip. I rooted for him at times and in other times he frustrated me as Pip tries to maintain his sense of morals while being corrupted all on the path of becoming a gentleman. I am feeling the same way about Pip so far in the book so kudos to Knight and Whitehead for giving me the same Pip. Of course, with any black characters, I am going to naturally gravitate and root for them in some way, shape or form. As I was watching the show, I was like, dang, am I going to have to hate these black characters? They're like too <laughs> I was already ready to hate on Estella. Like surprisingly though, I wound up having more empathy for her. And I like to think it's because of the combination of how she was written and how she was portrayed by Broom Franklin. We will see how I feel after I read the novel. Yeah, let, let's see. <laughs> 
Ashley Thomas as Jaggers was one of the standout performances for me. The way he was introduced had me intrigued. The layers that were slowly revealed about him over the course of the series was gratifying. The scenes between Jaggers and Pip were some of my favorites, as well as between Joe Gregory, played by Owen McDonald, and Pip. There was one particular scene where Joe visits Pip and I found myself actually getting a little emotional because of what was happening. I mean, Pip was out of it. Bro was out of it, okay? For reasons I can't really reveal. Tristan Gravel, who plays Compasson, I enjoyed his performance as well. Compasson has beef with Magrish. When I say beef, I mean beef. Their rivalry spans years and how that rivalry touches other characters and revelations coming to a head at the finale, I also enjoyed. He had great chemistry with Joe Harris as Magwish. Compasson was annoying and sinister. Great villain and Gravel, I think, enjoy that a little too much. I, at, the, at some point in the show, I wanted him to die. Like, by the end of the show, there was one scene that was super tense between him and other characters, and I was super worried that something was going to happen. Like, I was ready to throw something at the screen. <laughs> I also loved a scene with him and Coleman. Speaking of Olivia Coleman, she gave me Manipulative Havisham, and I was here for it. I like her background slightly better from what has been revealed so far in the book considering the connections that get made at the end that may change once I finish the book. Another thing that I appreciated was that we got to interact with characters without Pip. Since the book is from Pip's point of view it's showing conversations between other characters and it actually helped them develop them more. I really like how well Brittany Franklin and Coleman play off of each other. And again, like I said before, Coleman and uh, Gravel, and even uh, Joe Harris, again, and uh, Gravel. Haversham, Jaggers, Magwitch, and Compasson are manipulative as hell, using two of these adults to run an experiment on love while also being greedy on their own endeavors. That actually made me root for Pip and Estella a little bit to overcome these manipulations and to just find true happiness in themselves and the life they want. Um, some of the themes explore explored in the show are relevant today, especially when it comes to relationships and friendships. Generational trauma is a thing. Other themes that I noticed are like embracing who you are as a person while also being ambitious about your future and of course classism. How far are you willing to go for love? Are you willing to sacrifice your sense of self just to be with someone? There was an element they slid into the show that had me seriously side-eyeing a little bit because I was wondering if the only reason it was even brought up was because there were black characters on the show, especially in developing Pip's moral conscience. So it was just one of those things where I'm like, I don't know. So overall, this series is, I feel like, more of a binge than trying to see this weekly. I think those that are curious and haven't really seen too many of Dickens adaptations and also like that time period uh, and just piece type, period pieces in general would enjoy the show. If I had to rate it, I would say it's about a 6.5 out of 10. I'm leaning more towards 7. So what do you think of the show so far? Have you finished the series? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments. For those that have read the book, do you think this was a halfway decent adaptation? And I will see you in the next review. Stay tuned, y'all. Bye. Filing out the top of